Stockholm, home to 80,000 students, more than any other Nordic country. Over 5,000 of them have come here from other countries to study. I was so eager to come here before leaving Italy and it was exactly how I was expecting it to, to be. As a student, you're, you can always uh, meet friends, just taking a coffee with a friend at a cafe in the sunshine in the summer. It's a really, really good place to be. I think Stockholm has something for everybody. We have lots of nice national parks around the area where you can go hiking. Sweden is known for its culture of academic excellence. Well, I guess it's the, uh, the general curiosity of humankind, the eternal questions. Who are we? Uh, where do we come from? Is there life elsewhere and outside our Earth or even our solar system? Science education began in Stockholm in the 1800s. Stockholm University now has its home on a former Royal Deer Park, the first national city park in the world. And it's here where the Department of Geological Sciences is based. The history of geological sciences, or specifically geology, goes far back. It goes uh, back to the time when we were not Stockholm University, we were actually the University College Stockholm, Stockholm Sörskola. The department currently employs 22 staff members, with more lecturers on the way. The work embraces geochemistry, earth system modelling, geology, marine geosciences and, of course, climate change. I, of course, think that we do have a good standing internationally, but how do we measure this? Well, I think you can, for example, look at that we're not only taking part in international expeditions on land and sea, we are also actually organizing and leading international expeditions. And the same goes for conferences and workshops. No surprise then that in a city which boasts 5% of foreign students, that the Department of Geological Sciences claims nearly half its population from abroad. Stockholm University has a good reputation for its education in geoscience and geology. I think it's interesting to study the processes of this earth. And geology is, it's kind of cool. But of course there's far more to student life than merely studying. And again, Stockholm scores highly. So if you really want the student life with the associations, you can go into that if you want. Or uh, you can participate a little by going to the student pubs, or you can just leave it if you're not interested at all. For students who come here from abroad, there are many benefits. One is the opportunity to study in the universal language of science and commerce. I think it's very, very important in, uh, in my field to know English. But ultimately, it's the department's reputation that's the biggest draw. The chance to come over here and focusing on, uh, on quaternary geology or on uh, paleoclimate it was a, a chance I could not lose. Life as an international student in Stockholm it's so much fun. <laughs> it's a lot of studying, of course, during the day, but at night there's a lot of chances to meet people. In geological sciences at Stockholm, students are taught using a range of devices. There are lectures, practical classes, debates, and most importantly, field work. Many students are not taught geology in secondary school or in high school, so they come to university and they don't know anything or very little about geology. So if we wouldn't have practical classes with them or take them out in the field, they couldn't really understand the whole concept of geology. They learn how to read the landscape, but they also learn how to use present-day processes to interpret the mode of deposition of ancient rocks and their formation. Days spent off campus are often the most memorable for the students. There's a sense of adventure. They often have to rough it. And they take part in interpreting the formation of the landscape. So if we have lectures on, say, fossils, we would probably go to the island of Gotland in Sweden. If we have lectures about uh, volcanism, we might go to Iceland. When you're studying the Earth, it's hard to make interpretations based on one small part of it. And for this field trip, students have come to an island off the west coast of Scotland. Isla is really important in geology because it can tell us the story of the opening of an ocean and how it closes again. 
For students who've come on this trip, the experience is invaluable. I think it's important to get the practical learning and also to meet other students and the professors. Here we have such a skilled professor as Alistair. It's such a pleasure to tap into his knowledge. And he believes the students go away with more than just an academic experience. I think the students, when they come to Iowa, they definitely get an adventure. Another day, another island. Today, Northern Iceland. On this trip, a party of lifelong learners. Yeah, I have been interested since many years in something that I have had very little time to do before I was retired. It may seem glamorous, a trip to Iceland, but it's not a holiday. We get out early in the morning. It's four days and it's really intense. It's really important today to learn about how earthquakes, volcanoes are driven by plate tectonics. I learned that there are so many things to learn more and much more about. We have had very good instructors and uh, I have learned, I hope, quite a lot. The team behind Geological Sciences is what makes Stockholm University a leader in its field. Their active engagement in research and their passion for exploration fuels the success of the department. Their work investigates the big questions about life on Earth and beyond, and about how our world was created and how it will survive into the future. Professor Barbara Wolfarth and her team have, among other things, been looking at climate change events in the Earth's past. Here in Thailand, they've been studying the Asian monsoon. There are almost no studies dealing with uh, past changes in monsoon intensity. And that's the reason why we came to Thailand, because we want to see how has the monsoon varied in the past, how did changes in monsoon impact on ecosystems, and the big question is how much impact the monsoon has on global climate systems. By studying the climate in the past, we get important knowledge on how the climate system worked and all the different components of the climate system. And we also gain an important understanding of, of the fact that climate can shift very abruptly. Back in the North Atlantic, Professor Alistair Skelton has a passion for plate tectonics. If we were so fortunate that we would advance our understanding enough that we might move towards predicting earthquakes, we would make a difference. The town of Husavik is situated exactly on the Husavik Flatte Fault. This is a 100 kilometer long fault with a history of major earthquakes. Today, we simply cannot predict earthquakes. Earthquakes surprise us every time they occur. Earthquakes kill huge numbers of people. It is therefore enormously important and to a certain extent a responsibility of geologists to do their utmost to work out ways of predicting earthquakes. Even if there is a hard, cold reality that we may reach the conclusion that it cannot be done. The academic work that's taking place here goes to the very ends of the Earth, and in some cases, way beyond that. Our contribution to the subject is to study very primitive geochemical processes, and to make it easy for us, we study them on Earth, but we kind of keep in the back of our minds that these processes need to be possible outside of Earth. Uh, for instance, the type of rocks we're studying the same type of rocks that meteorites consist of and our neighboring planets like Mars. And now we see traces of methane on Mars and that could be either an inorganic production of the methane but it could also be a sign of life. So we have to go there and sample those gases. Of course you don't have to travel to Mars to find a landscape that's hostile and difficult to interpret. My research is about, I would say, two things. It's about paleogenography and the, specifically then the evolution of the Arctic Ocean. And now lately I've also moved to the Antarctic. 
The second part of my research, which is uh, mapping and compilation of bathymetric data on, on a broader scale. And that's the bathymetric grid that then is, for example, used in Google Earth and in, and in um, most applications when you do see uh, a bathymetric uh, data set. Glacier history of the Arctic and the Antarctic region and the marine part of the glacier history has been my specific focus. And that ties into the changes of climate cycles that Earth has gone through. Ice ages, uh, in between the, the warm periods in between the ice ages, etc. There's much talk of financial constraints in all areas of life. Traditionally secure careers are no longer the sure bet they once were. Science is no stranger to increasing competition. But Stockholm University is thriving and the students are supported in their applications to further their academic careers or to find a way into employment. I think that I will start by finishing my, my master thesis and then I will try to get a job somewhere, either if it's in the mining industry or if it's in the engineering industry. I want to have some job where I can be in the field because I love being outdoors and studying geology gives you a great opportunity to work outdoors. Probably some sort of exploration or uh, field mapping. Yes, I think the most students find a job quite easily after they finish their studies here. And since we have educated geologists for a long time, we have a lot of old students out there in different companies. So they approach us offering students job. They get jobs, for example, in, in everything from working with natural resources to environmental protection and so forth. We have several students that have gone to uh, the larger consulting companies doing geological research and as well as mapping. When I'll be done with, with my, when I studied, I want to apply for a PhD and keep up the um, academic career. Our PhD education is organized so that we have four years of full-time studies uh, fully financed, so you have a, a salary and, and that should cover your cost of living, etc. Over those four years, we have one year of coursework and we have three years which is dedicated for writing the thesis. Our students have actually not only continued to work within Sweden, we have seen several students that go on and get jobs internationally. Malin is undertaking postdoctoral research in geochemistry, but she started out in biology before doing a master's in environmental impacts. I think for people who want to go into research, you really have to burn for what you do and find something you're passionate about because it's a very tough business. But if you find good mentors and are surrounded by people that inspire you, it makes the job uh, that much easier. Geology has never been more visible as a study. And there are three key drivers for the increased profile. We have everything from earth hazards uh, environmental hazards, we have landslides, we have earthquakes and so forth and we need to understand the processes of the earth in order to, to be able to better predict when these hazards are going to happen. It's also very important for resources. We are totally dependent on the earth resources and our studies are about earth resources. And the same goes for climate. We currently are undergoing a climate change or at least we're seeing a significant warming specifically in the Arctic regions. And if you are going to place this warming in a longer time perspective, you also need to understand the longer time climate evolution of the planet. And that goes both for the ocean part and for the atmospheric part. Society continues to ask big questions about the survival of life on Earth. And academics at the Department of Geological Sciences at Stockholm University continue to strive to find the answers.